GM sent me a welcome kit email as a new Cadillac Lyric owner, which introduces people to the lifestyle of owning an EV, which is different. Altium cars are being touted by GM as a mass market play, unlike the Chevy Bolt, which was a niche market uh, vehicle, similar to uh, what was being targeted with the Nissan Leaf. But the Altium cars are mass market EVs. As such, this email is um, geared towards people who are new to electric vehicle life and introduces them to several concepts. There's several advantages to owning an electric vehicle. Um, some things that are commonly referred to are environmental uh, consciousness. Um, so both the government regulations and being aware of uh, the advantages to the environment of owning an electric vehicle. Um, instant torque, so the rapid acceleration associated with electric vehicles is another one. Uh, the decreased cost with uh, electricity versus gasoline. Uh, truth is, none of those I really care much about. If those were the only advantages to owning an electric vehicle, I probably wouldn't bother. That's just not enough to tip me. But this right here, this is a game changer. Um, throughout, I'm a man in my early 50s, and I could say that my purchasing decision for vehicles throughout my entire life has been reliability for price. Basically, I could spend a little money and get a car that's probably going to break down a lot and I'll be paying money on repairs, or I could spend a lot of money on a very reliable vehicle. But what if I could spend a little money on a super reliable vehicle? How about that for a concept? And that's what an electric vehicle is. And once you realize that that's what you're getting with an electric vehicle is a extremely reliable vehicle for the same cost because electric vehicles have reached price parity with internal combustion engine cars and they're actually supposed to drop to be less costly than internal combustion engine cars in the coming year as production increases um, and they're more reliable let's go over the systems that an electric vehicle doesn't have it doesn't have a muffler it doesn't have an exhaust system it doesn't have an oil pan uh, ga oil gaskets, um, spark plugs, doesn't have that. Doesn't have a transmission. It doesn't have a fuel pump. It doesn't have uh, a radiator. Um, it does have a cooling system, but it's not the same type of cooling system that's in an internal combustion engine car. It's a much more simple thing. So right here it's um, saying that there's fewer things to worry about meaning it's, it's more simple. If you look at the Tesla owner's manual, it basically says that there is no service schedule for a Tesla. Now, you know, basically they're saying you need to rotate your own tires, but basically it's not gonna break. And on the Cadillac Lyric also, I asked the salesperson, and there's also no service schedule. There's just a battery and an electric motor. I call it a blender on wheels. Very simple, very reliable, uncomplicated vehicle juice in the battery you go down the road very simple now that to me is a game changer i have a car that's super simple now all these other things environmental and you know fast torque instant torque and um, um the convenience of charging at home and the cost of electricity versus fuel okay yeah but having a car that doesn't break down and is a basically a solid state car no maintenance schedule doesn't break down Yes, I'm on board, especially since it doesn't cost any more. It's the same price as an internal combustion engine car. Let's go over some of the other advantages that GM is calling out here. Um, HOV lane. So apparently in some municipalities, you could take the HOV lane if you have an EV. It's not the case in my city, but whatever. Um, instant torque, obviously something that's called out. And uh, environmental, so we don't have a tailpipe, so we can't have any tailpipe emissions. Cool. Um, multitasking. And there is some... Uh, discussion in retail circles about electric vehicle charging uh, retail hubs. So you basically you plug in, you go buy a new pair of shoes, when you come back your car is charged, or you plug in, you go see a movie, and when you come back your car is charged, things like that. So there is some um, interest in the retail industry about uh, electric vehicle charging. All those are valid points. But again, for me, the main point is reliability. Uh, it's a dream come true to have a 
relatively low cost car that is bazillion times more reliable than the most expensive internal combustion engine car. That, that is freaking awesome. All right, let's go over some of these other videos. And I will stop it here. My wife uh, takes the Lyric to and from work five days a week. And the way it works for people who are not familiar with electric vehicles is one day during the week when she comes home, she plugs the car in, goes inside, has dinner. And when she comes back out the next morning, car is fully charged, unplugs it, puts the cable away and off she goes. She doesn't go to gas stations. That's it. End of story. It's super simple. It's less complicated than a gas station. I've heard it say, uh, if someone asks you how long it takes to charge your car, you say two seconds, because the truth is all it takes is the amount of time to plug in and then you go inside. Now that's if you have a charger at home. If you don't have a charger at home, it's a little bit more involved. You need to find a DC fast charger in your community. Um, the government is doing something called NEVI compliant charging locations, which are basically engineered for road trips on interstates. It doesn't really address the situation of a multi-tenant dwelling resident having to charge away from their home. I think that's going to be met by private industry. Companies like 7-Eleven, companies like Circle K are going to be putting DC fast chargers in their locations. And they already have started this, by the way. So people in multi-tenant dwellings need to charge up once or twice per week, either before they go to work or after they are done with work, they stop at one of these stores, they charge up for 30 minutes, then they go on home to cook dinner or go on into work. In between, they're having coffee and a donut or whatever, and uh, their car is charging at a DC fast charger. That's very likely how this is all gonna pan out. Let's go on to the next video. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, so this is where it's talking about shorter duration trips and also living in a, a municipal environment. Um, that is where um, the DC fast chargers come into play. Um, road tripping also is a bit of an issue in an EV uh, if it's a non-Tesla. If it's a Tesla, there's basically no issue to doing a road trip. In a non-Tesla, currently it is an issue. And the reason being is because the infrastructure is just not ready. Um, when I do an EV road trip in a non-Tesla, I don't rely on the in-dash navigation. I do it manually. I have a plan for where I'm going to do my charging, and then I have a backup plan. Should my primary plan fail, I need to have enough battery to get to my backup location. Uh, until there's enough chargers throughout the entire country where it's not an issue, Unfortunately, that's going to be the case. And it's likely going to be years before the uh, road trip experience is as seamless as it is with a gas car.
absolutely charge to 100% before you do a road trip. That's a great point. And then it says use the uh, Cadillac app to plan your stops. I used PlugShare, but you could use the Cadillac app. Yeah. I'm a big fan of EV road trips. It's kind of my thing. So uh, maybe not for everyone, but for me, it's a ton of fun to do an EV road trip. All right, let's see what else they got. Yeah, I'm going to stop them there. No, I do not use the in-dash navigation in order to have it automatically plan my charging stops for me because what it will do is it'll put me at a charger and say, okay, go ahead and charge up now from your 8% that you're currently at to 70%. And then you go plug in and the damn thing doesn't work. So no thank you. I'm going to use my own brain uh, in order to plan my charging stops. Um, it is definitely an issue if you pull up to a charging location and the thing is not working and you don't have enough battery to get to an alternate stop so in dash navigation does not take that into account and so for the time being i am uh, I, I don't do it Again, nope, I'm not going to use the in vehicle. I mean, I can use the in vehicle dash to locate charging stations if I'm doing a manual plan, but I'm not going to get on a road and let the AI engine just send me to a DC fast charger that may or may not be working. I'm not going to do it. I don't know why this is glitching out. Let's see if it snaps back real quick, otherwise I'll move on. Hold on a second, let me see if I can get this to go faster. Stand by. Yeah, so 
so what it didn't show there is when she swiped her card with her latte in the middle of the desert and the thing didn't run her card and she was stuck in the middle of the desert and she died a miserable death because there was no power and no one came for her. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being dramatic. Anyway, point being is that in if you're driving a non-test like like a Cadillac, you have to plan for any charger you go to not to be working and then have an alternate plan. Uh, currently, that's just the reality of the situation. Oh, I think this is a video about Q-Merit. So GM offers um, Altium car buyers a $1,500 credit to have a level two charger installed at their house through Q-Merit. Uh, GM also sells, uh, you can't get it on Amazon, you have to go to a GM dealer to get it, but GM also sells level two chargers. They're flow chargers and they're branded Altium. You'll see it here in the video in just a second. It's kind of glitching out again here, but let's see if it goes. I want to show you the charger. There it is. Let's get a better picture. Zoom on. There you go. That is the Ultium charger made by Flow. It's a good charger. I'd also recommend, if you're not going to use this one, uh, Tesla makes a wall charger that you can get with a J1772 plug. Uh, so either one of those two is probably what I'd recommend. Either the Altium charger from GM that you can get at a dealer through their parts department, or you go on the Tesla website, you can order a Tesla wall charger with a J72 plug. Both those chargers are pretty good. And um, if you elect not to have a charger installed because you live in an apartment or townhome or other form of multi-tenant dwelling, uh, you can get a two-year unlimited uh, charging plan from EVgo uh, from GM when you purchase your Altium car. So those two things are available to you. So that's the welcome kit. A lot of good information for prospective EV buyers and also um, information about the Cadillac Lyric itself. itself. So I thought I would share this information on a uh, YouTube video. Hope you enjoyed.